Hi, I'm Muffy Claire Gill. Welcome to my studio. My primary painting medium is the ancient wax and dye resist process known as batik. To create my paintings, I work with hot wax and dye and I paint on silk. I've been doing art all my life. It's melted crayon, writ dye, and India ink. I did this in high school. This was all from a photograph I took with my Instamatic camera. And I still use my travel photographs as the inspiration for my artwork today. And this one's an oil painting. I paint oil as well as acrylic, watercolor, mixed media. My primary medium is batik. So I take my photograph and I drop it into Photoshop to make a line drawing. And then I lay it down here on the light table. And then I take my piece of silk and lay it on top of it. Then I take my charcoal pencil and trace the drawing onto the fabric. No two pieces are ever the same because I never know what's going to happen with the wax and the dye. Batik is full of happy accidents because you never know what's going to happen. You might move the wrong way and then you get a big blob on the wax and you have to say, okay, I'm not going to get upset. I'm just going to put it to use and make it something good. I think that's what I like the most. I like the process of doing it and seeing what comes out of what I do from start to finish. Batik is process because you're looking at many layers and many hours of buildup on your fabric. I'm always learning something new and something different while I'm doing it. Life's one big experimentation. The next part is I'll take this fabric and I put it on a stretcher frame. I take these elastic threads with the hooks on them and hook them into the fabric to hold them in place and I have to pull each end tight to get the fabric tight. Anything that I want to keep white, I draw on with the hot wax. I use a mixture of 50% beeswax and 50% soy wax. This is called a canting. It's Indonesian in origin. You actually dip this in the hot wax. They come in different size spouts too, so you can have thick and thin lines. You can see how I can draw with this. You know, the hot wax comes out here and immediately dries upon contact. I'm just having fun. Once that is solidified, then I take Japanese kimono dyes. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten dye on these shirts. The Japanese do a little bit different from the Indonesians. The Indonesians draw with a janting and paint areas of dye on while the Japanese draw with a brush. And then they push the dye into the fabric. But I will wet this fabric and then swirl the dye into the fabric. And you can see how the wax acts as a block for the dye to keep it from going through. What's fun about this is that it goes through on both sides. And then once that dries, then I went back over with a thinner brush. So I'm doing this in successive layers, building up wax and dye and color going from light to dark till I get a very dark pattern. But you can see what a pretty pattern it makes. When you want to get it out, you have to go back and put these pieces of fabric between layers of newsprint and then iron out the wax out of the newsprint and then I steam it for two hours. And that sets the colors of the dye. And then I put it in a washing machine to remove the excess dye. After I do that, then I can stretch it onto the boards like this. I first came to Naples in 1972. But the nicest thing is Naples has become so much of an art hub. I love to call it my labors of love. Art is to make people happy. A lot of the joy I get in my artwork is the process I use to create the piece, the memories that go into it, the collections. I like to think that art fills a void that can help people smile. 
Southwest Florida is extremely lucky to have many talented artists, and Woodward Piers and Lombardo is very proud to display their art here on our walls in Naples and Marco Island through our featured artist program, Art Woodward. Subscribe to our channel and celebrate art with us.